Welcome to episode 40 of Superpowered Fancast. Uh, this is Darren. Now, our crack team of reporters and editors have gotten together a list of some of the news items that we think you need to know about for this week. Now, writer, director, and podcast guru Kevin Smith was taken to the hospital after falling ill, uh, following uh, filming a comedy special like his previous evening with Kevin Smith specials. He was taken to Glendale Hospital, where it was determined that he had a massive heart attack due to a 100% blockage in his left anterior descending artery. Uh, Smith took to Twitter and Instagram to assure his fans that he is, quote unquote, above ground, as uh, inspired as someone um, as Someone he inspired to get into podcasting, I am uh, in his debt, and I wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, he has actually gone back on social media and on uh, Smodcast and started talking about uh, started talking about his recovery. So it seems like he's he's doing great, and uh, all all power to him. Uh, get well soon, sir. Uh, in other news. Uh, For all fans of a galaxy far, far away and the happiest place on Earth, there is a there's new information coming out of Disney parks about their uh, massive and immersive Star Wars galaxy attraction at Disneyland and Disney World. Now, the new resort will feature attractions, including a Star Wars themed cantina, the Millennium Falcon and others. But one of the biggest draws will be the immersive environments, including the resorts uh, rooms, which will feature moving Star Wars themed space scenes. Like if you look out of your window in both the uh, cantina and even your, your, uh, your, your guest suites, you'll actually see like Star Wars related uh, scenes like space scenes and content uh, outside your window. Uh, guests will become a citizen of that world and their interactions and actions will drive their story. So it, it looks massive and amazing. And I you know, definitely plan on uh, being there at some point when uh, when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is what it calls, opens at Disneyland and Disney World in 2019. So getting into the uh, into the movie news, um, uh, writer director uh, Joss Whedon is out as director uh, writer director of the upcoming Batgirl film, according to uh, multiple sources and the director himself. Now, the the man who created Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, and helmed the first two Avengers films for Marvel Studios was brought in by Warner Brothers and DC Films in March 2017 to work on the Batgirl film and subsequently. Uh, to take over uh, reshoots for uh, on Justice League after Zack Snyder left the production. Now, in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, uh, Whedon stated that uh, Batgirl is such an amazing, it's such an exciting project that it took me months to realize that I really didn't have a story. Now, I actually consider that a pretty honest assessment, in my opinion. You know, one that certainly makes more sense than the quote-unquote creative uh differences you hear from um you hear from hollywood and um you know so if if anyone is interested in my opinion about who should be brought in to write and direct batgirl i believe that that batgirl wonder woman and upcoming domino series writer gail simone would have an excellent take on the character now as far as a director i think batgirl should be in an awesome action adventure and perfect person i think to direct that would be uh, Lexi Alexander. Now she's directed big screen comic book uh, movies before, like she directed the, uh, she directed Punisher War Journal, and she's directed DC characters uh, with episodes of, um, with episodes of Arrow and Supergirl. So, uh, the next bit of news is, is also about Star Wars, uh, just kind of pivoting back to it. Uh, Star Wars, Star Wars Episode uh, Nine. <clears throat> Star Wars: The Force Awakens writer director J.J. Abrams was brought back into Lucasfilm to take over the production of the last film in the new trilogy with Star Wars Episode Nine after Jurassic World's uh, Colin Trevor- Trevorrow uh, left. 
Now, on a recent episode of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, uh, Abrams revealed that he has completed the script for episode nine. Now, according to other sources, it, it looks like Abrams is looking to start filming on the sequel this summer to reach its uh, December 2019 release date. Now, Black Panther. Now, as I said in the last episode, I've been uh, to see Black Panther twice now, and I'm not the only one. Now, audiences are continuing to see the film multiple times as as well as new viewers all over the world. Now, the film took in an additional $112 million in the U.S. box office in its second weekend, and it's continuing to shatter records. Now, it is the second biggest non-opening weekend uh, in history behind uh, The Force Awakens, as well as the uh, second biggest 10-day total in history at uh, $404 million domestic, and has cracked the top 10 comic book superhero movies ever at number eight behind Wonder Woman and Captain America Civil War. So the film currently is at 476 million domestic with over 700 million worldwide and expected to reach $1 billion by next weekend. So, I mean, we pretty much already knew that there was going to be a sequel, but there literally should be no excuse for them not to do one now. So, <clears throat> Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, uh, speaking of Black Panther, um, Black Panther star uh, Michael B. Jordan is starring in a new film on HBO. Now, based on the classic sci-fi novel by Ray Bradbury, uh, Jordan stars um, and executive produces a an adaptation of uh, Bradbury's classic Fahrenheit 451. Uh, for HBO. Now, he plays Guy Montag, a, a fireman in the future. Now, he jo his job isn't to fight fires, it's to cause them. In this uh, dystopian future, media is a drug to the masses and books are banned. And all intellectual thought is banned. And Montag's job is to burn any books he finds as well as the homes that they are found in. Now, he, when he rebels against his job in the world, he finds himself in the crosshairs of his former boss and mentor, uh, Captain Beatty, played by Michael Shannon. So you've got uh, both Eric Killmonger and uh, and uh, General Zod in the same film uh, clashing with each other. So that should be uh, interesting to see. Um, now, the next bit of news is about uh, Shazam for DC Films. Now, after teasing both the costume and the character's hairstyle, uh, we now get a short look at the costume from a tweet. Now, Twitter user um, at Super Sam Ortiz uh, tweeted the image, which seems to show Shazam star Zachary Levi in costume as the DC comic superhero standing in what looks like some kind of Christmas scene. So not much else is revealed, but the cape does remind me of the new 52 redesign of the character that had the longer cape in the hood. Now, the suit does seem pretty accurate to the source material, which could be good or bad, depending on how it looks on screen. I think turning away from the trend of DC Films characters being armored from head to toe, um, you know, might make the hero more relatable when the film is released. For now, we'll just have to wait and see what the full costume looks like. Now, uh, Jessica Jones Season 2. The uh, hard-drinking superpower detective has a new mystery on her hands for Season 2 of the Marvel Studios series on Netflix. The series will find Jessica digging into one thing she's been trying to drink her way into forgetting, her past. Now, with the help of her uh, sidekicks, Malcolm and Patsy, uh, sidekicks Jessica's desperately trying to shed herself from, uh, Jessica finds herself in a world of superpowered assassins, rival detectives, and the authorities as she fights for her life and for the only things that she has left. Now, the first few episodes of the season have some amazing moments and acting from series star Christian Ritter, as well as Carrie Ann Moss, playing uh, tough as nails attorney Jerry Hogarth from season one, as well as Iron Fist. Now, her performance is, is in the episodes that I've seen are some of the best that I have seen. Like, they are absolutely amazing and definitely well worth uh, well worth watching. I think it's uh, I think she's just uh, she's transcendent. And I, do, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a reason behind the things that she's doing. And it, it's almost like her, her desperation is fueling some, some, some really good drama. 
So the next thing is Krypton. Now I admit I am still on the fence about the new Krypton series from sci-fi. Now mainly because it's hard for me to get invested um, in a series, in a, you know, invested in the stories of people who have to be wiped out in order to tell the story I actually want to see. So it's the equivalent of watching a series about Thomas and Martha Wayne dating when you know that their lives only get interesting after they get together and conceive Bruce. So, so Krypton follows the adventures of Superman's grandfather, Seg L, as he tries to clear the family name and, and bring the L family back into prominence. At least I, that's what I think it is. Now, standing in the way of that is a visit from a displaced Adam Strange, who is apparently wearing a hoodie in the past, which makes no sense. And uh, Adam Strange, who needs Seg's help to prevent Brainiac from destroying the timeline and preventing Superman from being born. Now, Sapphire has released the first footage of Brainiac on the series uh, played by Blake Ritson, and he looks good. I mean, he looks really good as... Um, as Brainiac, like a lot of the the information that I've seen, the the trailers that I've seen, the the uh, the footage I've seen of uh, of Brainiac, they they even have the skull ship, so he does look really good. He is like a very convincing Brainiac. It's just it's a very convincing Brainiac in a show that I still can't seem to reconcile as needing to be. So now finally. If you could name the smartest character in the Marvel Universe, who would you choose? Would you pick Tony Stark, maybe Bruce Banner, Riri Williams, Shuri? Now, the smartest person in the Marvel Universe, according to uh, according to Marvel, is <coughs> is nine year old New Lunella Lafayette, aka Moon Girl. Now, the little girl from the Lower East Side of Manhattan has a genius level intellect that the Kree considers a threat. And she has teamed up with a sentient Tyrannosaurus Rex named Devil Dinosaur. Now, together, the two of them fight crime while trying to protect her, her family and friends. Now, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, who can next be seen in the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp film as Bill Foster, a.k.a. Giant Man, will be executive producing a new animated Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur series for the Disney Channel. Now, this is part of Fishburne's overall deal with ABC Studios, where the actor also executive produces the uh, the series Blackish, uh, as well as um, uh, Grownish. So no channel has been named for the series, but you know we will definitely be uh, we're going to keep an eye on this and, and and you know put out any news that we can find. Um, so I mean that's it for this week, I man. I, I think we I think we covered some some good information now. At the end of this week, towards the end of this week, we're going to have another episode. I think we're going to do two a week. Probably one. the one's going to be at the top of the week is going to be news. And I think probably Wednesday or Thursday, we're going to uh, talk about uh, the comic book releases, the comic book reviews and and uh, and general comic news uh, for the week. And um, but this and, you know, these articles, like everything that we talked about, all the news we talked about you can find on uh, www.superpoweredfancast.com is new content daily there's always new information going up there's always news that i'm putting out there that uh that that we're doing including movie reviews comic book reviews uh television reviews there's general news just out there anything in the geek sphere and geek culture uh, we we talk about we don't get to everything, but we talk about some really good we talk about some really good stuff. So go to uh, superpoweredfancast.com and check it out. Um, other than that, uh, you can also uh, find me on Twitter. You can find us uh, at superpoweredfan. You can follow on Twitter. Um, and now, if you liked what you saw and what you heard, uh, feel free to like and subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, let's look for Superpowered Fancast. Uh, please rate and review the podcast on iTunes, and you can find these stories and more at superpoweredfancast.com. You can also follow Superpowered Fancast on Twitter at Superpowered Fan. So for the Superpowered Fancast, this is Darren signing off, saying I will see you next time.